This is my iPad. When I first got one, it felt like that awkward middle child between my laptop and my phone, and I wasn't really sure where it fit into my workflow. But over time, I think I found a sweet spot. It doesn't quite replace my MacBook or my iPhone, but that's not the point, because there are certain things that it just does better than both. In this video, I'll show you how I actually use my iPad on a regular basis to stay productive, organized, and add real value to my personal and professional life. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that I do with my iPad is to actually remove the noise. So the iPad can be a great media consumption device. The size is perfect for watching things like YouTube or Netflix on the couch all day. But if you clicked on this video, I'm guessing that you want to use your iPad in a bit more of an intentional way that maybe involves some more productive tasks or activities that add some more significant value to your life. And to do this, we need to remove most of the potentially distracting elements of our iPad. And a lot of this comes down to how we set up our home screen, the types of apps that we have within reach. So for example, I personally like to delete or at least hide all sort of entertainment, social media, potentially distracting apps from my home screen. So you can just right click and you don't necessarily have to delete, although I would probably recommend just deleting it entirely. But if you do need it, occasionally I would at least hide it from the home screen so you don't have those bright icons within reach because that's usually what triggers you to sort of impulsively open up one of these distracting apps. I've also been using the new sort of liquid glass theme that they added in iPad OS 26. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about the whole liquid glass thing. I kind of like it personally because I'm more of a fan of that minimalist, you know, desaturated look with so there's no more bright icons that I just want to randomly click on and it's kind of this nice black and white clean finish. Now if you go with a minimal home screen layout like this with only a handful of apps within reach, you can still have other apps on your device. You just now have to swipe down and search for them manually, which is a good intentional use of friction to avoid sort of impulsively checking email, social media, anything like that, because you have to think, okay, what do I actually want to use my device for? And you type out that application. It's obviously a little bit slower, but that's the whole point. And then notifications are obviously the main trigger for unintentional sort of impulsive technology use. I take the same approach with my phone, but honestly, even more strict. I really don't see much of a need to have any notifications on my iPad. So I would recommend turning them all off, but at least be intentional about what type of notifications you want to see, receive from what apps or from what individual people. And you can even go the extra mile and use focus modes to set up, you know, different sort of notification filtering at different times. I won't get too deep into it, but you can also do that similar to how you can do that on your phone. One of the key lessons from my upcoming course, Purposeful Productivity, is about how to optimize your digital environment so you can build a healthy, productive relationship with technology. Tools like your iPad or even your smartphone can be really powerful and genuinely improve your quality of life, but it's also easy for them to work against you given how a lot of the apps are specifically designed to capture and monetize your attention. So no matter how good your productivity system is, it'll start to fall apart if your digital environment is constantly distracting you from the important things in your life. If you want to build a better relationship with technology and systemize your life as a whole, click the top link in the description to join over 900 people on the wait list for purposeful productivity. All right, next let's talk about iPadOS 26 because this latest software update has definitely changed how frequently I use my iPad for various productive activities in my life. Thanks to this update, I think the iPads now feel closer than ever to a full-on laptop replacement. They've added a bunch of Mac-like features like the ability to resize windows and have multiple windows open in front of each other and drag them all around, multitask, whatever you want to do. They've added a menu bar at the top, which is very similar to the Mac where you have all the different controls. They've even changed kind of the mouse if you're using uh, this magic keyboard case like I do, where it looks more like an actual mouse cursor rather than the weird sort of blob that it used to be. And overall, it's just a way more pleasant experience to navigate the iPad when you're doing various sort of writing tasks or anything that you would typically do on your laptop. I've had this 11 inch iPad Pro for quite a while now. And what's really been a game changer for me is getting this magic keyboard case because it just feels really solid and sturdy. The keys feel exactly like the keys on just a regular MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. And it just feels solid. Like you can pick it up and 
it's not going to flop over. I've tried a bunch of different keyboard cases in the past and they just feel all flimsy and like they're not going to support the iPad and you can't really carry it around easily. I would definitely recommend getting it if you are going to use your iPad for any sort of productive work related tasks, especially if they involve writing or typing on a keyboard. But at this point, I think the iPad Pro can definitely do just about everything that I do on my laptop. I'm not necessarily looking for it to replace my entire laptop and I'll still definitely use my MacBook Pro for things like video editing, graphic design work, or anything where I kind of want to have that bigger screen. But if I were traveling or something, I'd probably feel comfortable leaving my big, heavy 16 inch laptop at home and just bringing this iPad Pro and, and being fine with that. And that brings me to the main way that I approach using my iPad for productivity, and that is as a minimalist work setup. So one of my favorite sort of productivity hacks is to switch up my physical environment when I'm starting a new deep work or focus session. For whatever reason, when I change my physical environment or go to a new place, specifically with the intention to do a particular productive task, it almost always works without fail. Like I'm able to very quickly get into a flow state, stay focused, get rid of all distractions because I've gone to this dedicated place with intention and the iPad makes that really easy to do. I would do this with my laptop as well, but it's just kind of a pain to carry it around. I often keep it just plugged in at my home desk setup, but if I want to go to a cafe, lounge, library, uh, just outdoors or work at the dining table for a little bit, I can just take my iPad, quickly walk over there and, you know, lock in from there. And I think it does really well with any sort of writing test, especially with this magic keyboard. So things like writing memos, taking notes, doing research, scripting videos, writing course material, emails, that type of thing is what I like to spend a lot of time doing on my iPad. And even spreadsheets can work okay. It's a bit finicky compared to the laptop, but it's definitely doable if it's nothing too complex. So I use it to update various tracking spreadsheets for my finances and things. But if it's any sort of more in-depth analysis, like what I might do for my day job, it's definitely a lot smoother on a laptop. And I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes I actually prefer working on this smaller screen and it feels like it's a bit easier to stay focused because my, I don't know, my eyes just like aren't moving around as much across a bigger screen. And I'm just sort of focusing on this tiny thing but i also do enjoy using it for any sort of admin household tasks ordering random things replying to emails setting up appointments i'll often take my ipad somewhere else away from my sort of normal deep work desk setup to you know another part of my apartment or a cafe or something to just crank out some admin work like that now another powerful way that i like to use my ipad is for more visual thinking journaling and handwriting workflows and this is really a unique feature of the ipad specifically unlike some of the earlier stuff we discussed which is more about making the ipad similar to a laptop being able to write with an apple pencil is something that you can only do on the ipad obviously not on your computer there's a few different tools that i like to use for this one is just the built-in freeform app which is apple's whiteboard app that they put out a few years ago and this is really great for any sort of visual planning, mapping out ideas, any kind of like mind mapping, anything that involves more abstract thinking, or if you want just kind of like that endless canvas space to work with, I really enjoy using this freeform app. And then also just Apple Notes, I really enjoy handwriting directly into the Notes app. And there's a cool feature where you can have a quick note that you can access directly from the lock screen. So you kind of have to try it out for yourself but basically in the settings, you can adjust this where you can just start writing on your iPad while it's locked and it'll open up a note and you can have it give you a fresh note each day. And this basically allows your iPad to sort of mimic if you just had a, you know, a blank sort of pocket notebook at your desk, you can use your iPad in a similar way. You can also add grid lines or sort of notebook lines to the notes to make it feel even more like a notebook. It's just a great option if you do want sort of more of that hybrid digital analog workflow using something like Apple Notes or Freeform is great for that. And then there's also the Apple Journal app, which they recently added to the iPad. I've been using this a lot more lately because it's nice and free, but also now that they have it on the iPad Mac 
and iPhone. You can sync your journals between all of your devices. It's got a bunch of great features. One of my favorites is just the journaling suggestions that it makes. So it'll suggest you different journaling prompts based on things like photos that you've recently taken, music you've listened to recently, uh, workouts you've done, people you've met, places you've gone. And so if you're just getting into journaling and you're not really sure what to write about, it's great at suggesting places to start. You can also add photos, pictures, record audio directly into your journal entries and even track your mood. And then of course, handwriting as well directly into the journal app. And when it comes to anything like journaling or something that involves deep thinking, planning out your life for goals, I'm definitely in favor of doing things by hand because it helps you slow down and take the time to really think about what you're writing. You can of course do this on old fashioned pen and paper, but it's also really enjoyable to do on the iPad. And it was one of the main reasons that I got my iPad to use it not just as a mini laptop, but as this sort of hybrid digital analog notebook. But at first I was kind of frustrated because writing on the iPad with the Apple Pencil felt kind of slippery and not you know, as satisfying and natural as writing on just actual pen and paper, but that all changed once I started using Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector designed specifically for creators, students, and professionals who want their iPad to feel like a real notebook. Its nano dots technology adds just the right amount of resistance. So when you're writing or sketching, it mimics the feel of premium paper instead of smooth glass. Whether I'm taking notes, journaling, planning a video, or just mapping out my thoughts in free form or the journal app, the tactile feedback makes the whole process feel much more enjoyable. And when your tools feel satisfying to use, you're much more likely to stick with your habits. It also helps reduce glare, minimize fingerprints, and protects your iPad from scratches, all while keeping the screen crisp and responsive. If you want to get the most out of your iPad as a practical productivity tool, then I definitely recommend checking out Paperlike using the link in the description. They also offer a 100 day satisfaction guarantee so you can try it out for yourself completely risk free. Big thank you to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Now another great way to use your iPad is for education and learning. So I've heard a lot of people like to use apps like Notability and GoodNotes. If you are in school, it can be great for taking notes, handwritten notes in class. I've personally been done with university for quite a while now, so I haven't experienced using these apps, but if you're looking for something like that, maybe check those out. But even though I've been done with my formal university education for quite a while now, I still like to keep up with self-education and learning about various topics that interest me. And the iPad can be a great tool for learning if you use it right and you're not just using it to mindlessly consume content without actually implementing anything into your life or getting a deeper understanding. So a high level of what my sort of learning workflow looks like is I'll have some piece of content open, whether it's a physical book, book on my Kindle, article, YouTube video, podcast, etc. And then I'll have my Apple Notes app open, sometimes, you know, split screen on my iPad. And as I'm consuming that piece of content, I'll sort of summarize the core ideas on my Notes app in my own words. And this really helps me really solidify my understanding of the material. And so I'm not just kind of copying things down word for word, but actually taking the time to think about, okay, like what does this actually mean in whatever you know piece of content I'm consuming and what's the relevance to my life? How does this connect to maybe other ideas or experiences that I have? And then I take those notes down for that particular piece of content. And then I'll also build up these sort of idea documents in Apple Notes where I pick a particular topic, like let's say productivity. And on this one note, I'll just put all the sort of insights and thoughts and ideas that I've learned from other pieces of content or my own experience on this one document. And then every now and then go through and kind of organize things and kind of collect my general thoughts on this topic. And this is just another layer that really helps me kind of solidify my understanding. And instead of just passively consuming content, actually turning it into real knowledge in my brain that gets implemented into my actual life. And then lastly, I really enjoy using my iPad for daily planning and life management. So again, because of the portability of the iPad and the power of the iPad to handle, you know, multitasking different applications and any sort of workflows that I would typically do on my computer, it really reduces the friction to planning out my week and keeping my various life systems organized. 
it really has everything I need. I can just quickly split screen between, you know, my calendar and Apple Notes or my Apple Reminders so I can plan out my week or update my task list. And because it's so portable, I can easily bring it anywhere in just like a small sling bag instead of, you know, having to have a whole briefcase or a backpack to carry my big laptop. And I even like to take it outside, go somewhere new or like a relaxing park or something to do these weekly reviews, journaling or planning out my day because it just makes the whole process a bit more fun for me. And that's really important to stay consistent with any type of habit is to, you know, make it actually enjoyable to do the habit and you'll just get better results that way. So that's kind of a high level overview of the productive ways that I like to use my iPad, but there are some additional tools that I didn't mention in this video, some of which are apps and software on my iPad and some things that are completely separate. Click this video to learn about five tools that quickly improved my quality of life. I'll see you over there.